Hey there, so today what I want to do is I want to compare two PCs that I think are extremely popular and they're very close to each other in terms of price. They're pretty much one tier apart from each other. That being the Trigkey Speed S5 with the Ryzen 5 5500U and the SRE5 Max from Beelink with the Ryzen 7 5800H. Now real quick, I do want to mention that with the trig key, you could pretty much also use it as a substitute for the B-Link SER5 with the Ryzen 5 5500U or the 5560U. The reason being is that I'm almost 100% sure that trig key and B-Link use the exact same o ODM to make their systems, so they're pretty much identical. But taking a look at the individual systems, the B-Link SCR5 Max has been a very interesting system because of the fact that extremely high out of the box TDP of 54 watts really lets the APU that's in the system flex its muscle. Something that we rarely see with many PCs. A lot of the time they tend to be more limited in terms of their power of availability and it doesn't necessarily let you fully utilize the hardware that you paid for in this case you pretty much are getting everything you can out of this chip in contrast to that the trig key is a little bit more limited in terms of its tdp being set at 25 watts now that's perfectly fine because of the fact that the pu and gpu that are in this system don't require really that much power in general past 25 watts even going up to 30 to 35 or even 45 watts as i've shown in a video before you really don't get that much more performance now, the reason that the SRE5 Max actually does benefit from the higher TDP is because of the fact that we're dealing with an 8-core, 16-thread system with a GPU that has 8 cores like all the way up to 2000 megahertz. In comparison to the 5500U, which has a 6-core, 12-thread Zen 2-based CPU that is in general set to a lower clock speed so it just needs less power to actually reach those clock speeds and it's the same with the gpu since it's only seven cores and they only need to go up to 1800 megahertz so the power difference between the two systems isn't exactly going to limit the trig key it's for the most part going to be fully utilizing its hardware so let's see what the actual performance difference is between the two systems so to start things off, we're going to be taking a look at a few games. Here we have Batman Arkham Knight running with the lowest in-game graphics settings, but we are at the full 1080p resolution. As you can see on both systems, the hardware is essentially being fully utilized. You can see that the GPU is reaching its maximum clock speed and is essentially at 100% utilization. And you can see by the percentage usage on the CPUs on both, the CPU itself really is not needing to do much of anything. Now, there isn't a massive increase in terms of performance going with the 5800H here, but it is a uplift in terms of 1% lows and FPS average. And considering that we're at around a 30 FPS range for the 5500U, getting that nice bump in 1% lows and FPS average with the 5800H would actually be pretty meaningful. Though notice that we are using a pretty noticeable amount of more power. Power. The SCR5 Max is a louder system because of this higher TDP. But moving on to Mountain Blade Banner Lord, here you can see it running with the built in benchmark, lowest in game graphics settings. And here there's a pretty noticeable difference in terms of performance between the two systems, where the 5800H is essentially giving us a pretty nice 60 FPS average just with 1% lows that dip down a little bit here and there. The 5500U is struggling to get to that range. Now, both are pretty playable, and you're going to be able to play the game on pretty much both of them if you really wanted to play this title. Though, keep in mind that the extra headroom of the 5800H is really going to come in handy in those much larger battles. So if you're into the late game, you're going to notice a difference between the two chips here. But both are still within a playable range, and knowing the type of people that enjoy this title, we'd put up with a lot. Now moving on to the next title, we do have Red Dead Redemption 2. Here we have it running with the lowest in-game graphics settings. We are using FSR also with the performance preset. The only thing that is turned up is the textures, which are set to ultra. And overall, in terms of the performance, neither is giving anything particularly amazing or impressive, though the 5800H is showing that it will be an overall more playable experience. And if you're the kind of person that ever grew up playing PlayStation 3 or Xbox 360 games, this is about the FPS that you're used to. And even if you played some PlayStation 4 titles, some of them are getting about this kind of FPS 
FPS. In fact, I wish I could have gotten this FPS while playing Bloodborne. But in general, you do see a pretty noticeable gap, particularly in the 1% lows, though also seeing an increase in those FPS averages where we're now comfortably above 30 FPS is a welcome addition and means that if you're actually looking to play this game on one of these systems, well, the SRE5 Max is actually proving to be a pretty viable option. Now jumping over to an older title that is still an absolute classic and really more along the range of what I think most people that have these kinds of systems should be playing. We have Metro Last Light running with the built-in benchmark. This is with the lowest in-game graphics settings, though visually speaking the game still looks very very nice. Now this one didn't give us earth shattering levels of performance difference by any means but it was still a meaningful uplift where again the 5800h ends up feeling like it is a far more complete experience since we are far closer to 60 fps and the uplift in the one percent lows is pretty welcome now the 5500 you didn't do a bad job by any means but it isn't exactly the most spectacular experience and if you played these next to each other side by side you would more than likely notice the difference in performance still not an earth shattering difference and considering how much quieter the 5500u actually ends up being i can see why someone would make the trade-off here we're not exactly seeing a substantial jump in terms of igpu performance or anything like that and it really all just depends on whether or not you need that extra cpu now another title that i took a look at was rise of the tomb raider and this one was an interesting one because after running the built-in benchmark multiple times what became very apparent is that again the sre5 max is really giving a closer to 60 fps average experience in a lot of these titles where the 5500 you can a lot of the times end up clearing over 30 fps it's getting to that 60 where it usually struggles and the 5800h seems to just have enough horsepower to get it almost all the way there to the point where it will be a lot more difficult for you to notice the difference in comparison to the 5500u where we're pretty noticeably far away from 60 fps certainly not an unplayable experience considering that the price difference between these two systems isn't really that significant outside of needing a quieter system i don't really see much of a reason to go with the 5500u now one title that actually did end up showing a pretty massive jump in terms of performance between the two was rainbow six siege running with the built-in benchmark with the lowest in-game graphics settings and using fsr at the performance preset you can really see here that the ser5 max is getting a pretty noticeable increase in terms of performance and it really is the difference between being able to essentially utilize a 60 fps monitor to its full potential versus being able to utilize 144 hertz display now obviously not to its full potential but pretty close to it the jump from 60 fps to 120 is going to feel a lot more noticeable than the difference between 120 and 144 hertz there's diminishing returns to it and already being able to essentially utilize the vast majority of the capabilities of a 144 hertz display is pretty nice for a title like this now the last game that i wanted to take a look at was mafia 2 running with its built-in benchmark and this is another one of those cases where the difference ends up really being just being able to have a consistent above 60 fps average or at least at 60 fps while being noticeably far from it in the case of the trig key it's again the usual situation of neither one of them is a bad experience really though the 5800h does have at least some meaningful lead that could make choosing it as an option really a lot more clear really the biggest advantage that the trig key has is just that it is an overall quieter system and yes i know you're going to see the temperatures on the screen and you're going to think well but it's running hotter and i mean yeah it is running hotter but inherently using less power so it's generating less heat so the fan is just running slower and it's letting the temperature creep up because it's not at a dangerous temperature anyway so it's essentially prioritizing sound over temperature and it's because of the fact that the temperature that it's reaching is still more than usable while the sre5 max does need to work a little bit harder to keep those temperatures cool so it's just inherently a more noisy system because the tdps that it can reach are pretty high up there i mean remember the dimensions between this and the trig key and the sre5 standard are pretty much identical so it just has to cool a lot more heat a similar size package so the gpu difference is pretty meaningful but what about the cpu difference 
Well, here is where things get a little bit interesting. Now, as I mentioned before, the 5800H has eight cores, 16 threads, and it is running on the Zen 3 architecture, while the 5500U is six cores, 12 threads, running on Zen 2. They're both also on different class tiers in terms of the product stack, with the U series being pretty much optimized for lower TDPs, usually around 15 to 25 watts, while the H series is usually targeting around 35 to 54 watts, 45 being the most standard though. So because of these differences, there are some unique characteristics to each chip, specifically in the boost clocks. The SRE5 Max is pretty much able to essentially clock higher because of the fact that the 5800H has a pretty noticeable difference in terms of clock speed. It can just reach these higher clock speeds and it can do it across more cores because it has the extra wattage to feed all of them. While the 5500U has less cores to deal with and each individual core just needs a lot less wattage because a clock speed of 4 gigahertz is a lot easier to hit. Essentially the way that it works is that for most chips they're going to have an efficiency curve. And at some point it just requires a lot more energy to get slight increases in performance than it would be towards the middle of the efficiency stack. So the 5800H just inherently needs more wattage to actually be able to hit these higher clocks because they're past the efficiency curve. And you can tell that by looking at the Cinebench 2024 scores here, where in both the single and multi-threaded performance, there is a pretty noticeable difference between the two chips. This really just comes down to architectural differences. The performance jump between Zen 3 and Zen 2 was pretty massive. And as you can tell by the single core performance here, that increased clock speed and the higher IPC leads to some pretty meaningful increases in single core performance. This is not a TDP difference here because we're talking about single core performance, which means that we're not fully utilizing 25 watts and we're certainly not fully utilizing 54 watts. One individual core just needs a lot less wattage to actually reach its full potential. Or at across more cores, that's when you actually start to introduce problems, which is why also you see a pretty massive difference in terms of the multi-core performance. Where the difference physically is only two cores, but the eight cores here are able to actually clock at a higher rate across all of the cores versus the 5500U, which is limited by its clock speed. And it really needs closer to around 30 to sometimes 35 watts to really fully utilize all of its cores. Now, overall, I'm pretty much painting an image here that the SER5 Max does have a pretty meaningful difference in terms of performance. But does that matter really? And that really just comes down to your specific use cases. As you see, the performance in gaming is noticeable. It's not earth shattering. It's not going to essentially push you to be able to play more titles than what you could on the 5500U for the most part. You're of course going to have some outliers here and there, but in general, if gaming is something that really matters to you, I would consider looking elsewhere. Now, if you want a general everyday computer, you should not even be looking at the SCR5 Max. You should instead be looking at the trig key or you should just be looking at the SRE5 with the 5500U or the 5560U. You get a lot of performance in these systems for a very, very cheap price. And the thing that I love about these systems is just how quiet they are. They are extremely quiet, especially the SRE5 series. The trig key is just a little louder because it doesn't have the top ventilation. So it doesn't actually have like the, the top fan and because of that it's just a little bit louder you really have to push the system to its max to actually get it to the point where it's noticeable though but the sre5 in general when you push it to its max just makes absolutely no noise so the lower tdp is a nice addition really but that's only if you just need an everyday computer. If performance is what you're looking for, if you're looking for a mini PC that isn't going to break the bank, but is going to give you some top level performance, there is nothing right now on the market that competes with the SRE5 Max. You get eight cores, 16 threads. You could stick up all the way to 64 gigabytes of RAM into the system if you wanted to. The only real thing missing is just having access to Thunderbolt. But outside of that, it's practically the perfect package. Because remember, there is very little difference between 
the 5000 series and 6000 series in terms of CPU performance. There was pretty much no IPC gain really, just slight clock speed increases. And what that means is that this 5800H is going to perform very similar to the 6800H in terms of CPU. And that means it's going to perform pretty much the same as the 7735H. And what that means is that you're able to pretty much get the same level of CPU performance at around a hundred to two hundred dollars less now you are sacrificing some of the, the benefits of the improved rdna2 igpu but you're at least getting pretty much what is essentially the best version of vega ever implemented besides what was in more exotic chips like the 5900hx but this is about as close as you're going to get to that at a cheap price so i still think that the sre5 and the trig key here are the best everyday computers for the vast majority of people if you need cpu power the sre5 max is a really really compelling product because you could pretty much pick up multiple of these get essentially three and set up a kubernetes cluster that is going to have insane levels of cpu performance and you could really pack it up with a lot of ram that realistically you're more than likely not going to fill up ever in your home lab but it really seems like b-link has two absolute winning designs here and i completely understand why they are absolutely popular because the between these two designs it's hard for any other company to compete so if you're interested in picking up either one of these systems check the links down below i'll catch you guys in the next one